92.1 WROI, WROI FM.com. We are streaming on RTC audio, I should say, on RTC channel 5, and soon audio and video on RTC channel 4. That's why Brant's in the studio this morning. Good morning. Good morning. And nice to have you back with us. Nice to be here. 65 degrees sunshine, and time now, as Baron said, for our Fulton County Community Foundation report. Brian Johnson's again with us. Brian, good morning. Good morning, Tom. Thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having you me. You brought a special me. guest as well. I did. Yeah. We're going to be talking to Jackie Johnson here yeah. in a minute about the Fulton County Pack a Backpack program. Excellent. Um, but um, it's it's wonderful to see um, organizations stepping up and individuals helping our community. Um, we just got done with school. I think Rochester's last day was yesterday. Valley's last day was last got week. Got some graduations and, coming up. Caston as well. So um, kind of an exciting time. Um, I'd like to start off by saying congratulations to all the 2017 graduates. Um, that's a great accomplishment to... Um, graduate from high school. Um, we're looking forward to everything that you guys do um, in the coming years um, and also hopefully being able to help some of those students with the cost of college. Um, this last couple of weeks we've been able to hand out scholarships. Um, I always tell people if you think that the kids these days are what's wrong with the world, <laughs> sit on a scholarship committee at exactly. some point sure. um, because you're going to be very encouraged to see how much these kids have already accomplished and the things that they're involved in. It, it really is a very encouraging process to see um, what our next generation, um, their citizenship already. So um, congratulations to the class of 2017. We're looking forward to seeing your accomplishments and um, hopefully some of you will choose to be back in our community and um, impact our community um, in the same way that you have during your high school career. So Exactly. Um, when we're talking about scholarships, we do have a few um, summer scholarships that are available. Most of these are for um, either students who are currently in college or planning to go on for further education. Um, the first one is the Back Home Again in Indiana Scholarship. Um, that is for non-traditional or GED students. Um, when I say non-traditional, that's somebody that maybe has taken a few years off from college, um, maybe going back to complete a degree, or if you're working in a career um, that you may need some extra training for. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a degree um, seeking student, but um, needs to be a resident of Fulton County and um, is looking for some extra training. So. Um, by the way, all these applications are available on our website, nicf.org. Okay. Probably um, the best place to get them, isn't it? It is. It is. Um, so the Back Home Again in Indiana Scholarship, um, the Fulton County Youth Scholarship, um, that students who have completed at least one year of college and are planning to work with children or youth in their future career. Um, it's not really restricted to too many um, fields of study, but if you're working towards a degree that would some way impact children and youth, um, you'd be eligible for that scholarship. Um, the Eric E. Smoker Memorial Scholarship, of course, Eric was a very accomplished and talented artist. Um, the requirements for that are a graduate of a Fulton County High School. Um, the student needs to be a junior or senior in college um, for the 17-18 school year. Um, and majoring in some field of fine art, which um, would include areas like painting, sculpture, drawing, or architecture. Okay. Um, so that's a, a scholarship specifically for art students. A um, couple of graduate level scholarships. The Ginger Miller Higher Education Scholarship. Of course, Ginger was a, a large advocate for education in our community. Um, and this scholarship was set up in her memory. Um, it's for students who are pursuing some sort of graduate degree. Um, it's, there's no f specific field of study, um, but it could be a professional degree, it could be um, doctorate, things like that, anything that um, is at the graduate level. A um, couple of requirements, um, students need to be a Fulton County resident, um, and they need to have been able to maintain a GPA of um, a B or higher during their undergraduate work, or if they're already a graduate student, have maintained a B GPA average during their graduate studies. Okay. So that scholarship is available. Also, um, the Frederick Rakestraw Law Scholarship, of course, was set up in memory of um, Frederick, who was um, 
very much involved in our our court system in Fulton County and as an attorney. Um, this is for students who have been accepted into a um, law school within the United States. Um, one of the requirements is that they need to have been a Fulton County resident for at least three years um, during their high school career. Um, so if you know of a student planning to pursue a law degree or is already in that process, encourage them to apply. Um, again, all of those applications are available on our website, nicf.org. The application deadline is Ju July 7th. So that is coming up here pretty quick. But if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call. Um, we'd love to be able to match up with a scholarship that um, could help you continue your education or take that next step or even get you back in the education system. Something else that happened um, during the month of May, um, the Fulton County Women's Giving Circle held their annual social. Um, it's always a good time um, for that. Um, 2017, there were $5,500 in grants awarded to different projects throughout the community. They just continue to grow, they? Don't just they? continue to grow. It, it's wonderful to see what this group has, has done. Um, this year, there are four grants that were awarded. Um, there was a grant of $1,000 to um, a Cutshaw Park Pavilion. Um, if you're not familiar with the town of Akron, okay. um, back to the north side of where the Opera House and Day Hardware and the gas station, there is um, Cutshaw Park. It's a city park. Um, in the past, it was used to be a town dump, and the, the town has really gone a long ways to revitalizing that area. There's now a nice disc golf course. Um, there's a dog park. There's a skate park. Um, in the wintertime, there's a sledding hill, and there's a nice walking path. It's really a nice area. I'd encourage folks, if you haven't been over there, I've enjoyed it myself. Okay. If you haven't been over there, check it out, um, even if you just want to go for a walk somewhere. Um, but there's a Leadership Academy group that is going to put up a pavilion one thing that there's not back there yet is a space for people to gather and maybe sit down and have a right. meal um, or have some sort of event back there um, so there's a leadership academy group that's working on putting in a shelter back there um, they received a thousand dollars for um, that project the Fulton Community Center, of course, that's a building that was built through the efforts of many local folks in the Fulton area, um, received $1,000. Um, they need to finish their floor in the main, um, main room slash gymnasium area, um, and they're going to be putting down an epoxy floor, and also part of that project will be adding the lines for basketball and volleyball courts um, during that project. So they received $1,000 for that. Um, the Kiwana Hardery, this is a newer organization. Um, it's the old Baptist church in Kiwana, um, right there on Main Street. Um, it was purchased by a group of individuals, and they've turned it into kind of a community center that um, hosts events um, that promote art and just well-being in the community and so it's been wonderful to see that transformation one thing that they needed of course it being an old building um, there are not ada accessible um, restrooms currently so they're they're receiving fifteen hundred dollars to renovate the restrooms and make it um, handicap accessible so they can hold even more events there excellent and then the last one um Prairie Edge um, Nature Park mm -hmm. out on Third Street. A place that, that continues I, to grow as well. It does. A place that I one of my favorite places in the summertime to right. sit down and have lunch and enjoy the walking trail. They're receiving two thousand dollars. They are um, going to be doing some additional wildflower planting out there and also creating a boardwalk through a couple areas. So it'll be wonderful to see. Um, already a wonderful park, but this will be another great addition. There are some partnerships with the schools um, involved with this as well. And so um, I'm looking forward to seeing what they come up with on that. So $2,000 for that. So um, total, since this group started making grants in 2011, they've granted $39,500 awesome. to community projects. Yeah. It's it's wonderful to see that. Um, when you think about that is from each member's $120 a year dues um, has turned into almost $40,000 in grants in our community. So um, thank you to all the women who are a part of that. Thank you to the organizations that applied and are receiving grants and doing something in our community to improve the quality of life. Um, if 
there are women listening. Of course, Tom, you sure. and I aren't eligible. I understand Jackie, that, Brian. She's, understand she's qualified. It, it's, a good, qualified it's, it's a good kind of discrimination, it is, right? It, it is. It is. <laughs> um, it's really a wonderful group. If there are women that are interested in participating in this, joining or finding more out about this, um, I'd encourage you to give us a call. Um, or we also have the information on our website, okay. NICF.org. You can find the membership form. $120 a year. Um, turns $10 in, a month. $10 a month. Um, half of that goes into an endowment fund. Half of that goes out to community grants. And, and the beautiful part of this program is that while we've been giving out almost $40,000 in grants, we've also been building an endowment fund that has surpassed $40,000 and is starting to um, be able to return some of that money back to the community to grant. So that number will just continue to grow, and these numbers will go up from here. So it's okay. wonderful to see that. So. So with that, um, we want to welcome Jackie Johnson. Jackie is the, can we, can we say you're the original organizer of the Fulton County Pack a Backpack? I know you have a lot of people that have been involved in this, but. I wouldn't think it would be fair to say the original. I actually started it out with CASA. So okay. CASA, Fulton County, they would probably be the original organizer. And then when they didn't want to do it anymore, I stepped in and took over. And that was 2008 is when I took over myself. Okay. Well, tell us, give us a little bit of background, how the idea of Fulton County Pack a Backpack got started. Well, myself, when I was young, school supplies were always, you know, hard for my parents to get so um, I just love the idea of being able to send a, a child to school prepared and it was always exciting for me to get those new school supplies so um, I always had people helping me when I was a kid and so I'm just returning the favor and you mentioned 2008 um how long has the organization been around and, and been serving students? CASA started in 2006, and they probably handed out about 50 to 75 backpacks. Um, a nonprofit organization, a 501c3, was established in 2010. And um, I'm the president. My husband's the vice president. My daughter's the secretary treasurer. My staff is on the board. I'm here at Tidewater. So it's where it's kind of a family, and I consider my staff family. It's a, all a family event. So. Um, and that started in 2010. Okay. And, and tell us a little bit about some of the, the services that you provide. You mentioned school supplies. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the process of getting those and also about the process of you guys knowing what supplies need are needed. Um, well, we, we um, prefer monetary donations. That way we can order the school supplies that are needed to fulfill the list because we, we just started packing the bags. We used to do kits. Now we're actually packing the backpacks based on the um, school list. It's changed so much since me and you were in school because of iPads and technology. Yeah. So they don't need as much like that we needed. So we buy the school supplies and we find that when we do receive supply donations, a lot of it is pencil and glue so we have tons of that <laughs> so, so no pencils and glue yeah, right so if we that hasn't changed yeah. <laughs> we have tons of pencils and glue but if we can get paper i mean that's they still use paper and they yeah. still use pens and backpacks are a big thing True. scientific calculators um we um purchased last year and we will we were able to do this through the your our grant that we received through the fulton county community foundation and we bought each math teacher at the high school a scientific 24 scientific calculators so the kids would always have Excellent. one when they went to class. So you mentioned um, the school list. You guys work with the schools to find out grade specific so that they're very individualized, right? Yes. Um, I think Jessica Webb handled this for me last year. She called each school, Jessica or Mandy, they called each school and they got a detailed list emailed to them. And then um, when the students came in or the parents came in to fulfill the backpack, we had their list ready for them and we filled that backpack full for okay. them. So give us an idea of who is served, who's eligible to receive help through this, and also if you have an idea as far as the number of, of students you've been able to serve over the last few years. Okay, we serve any child who resides in Fulton County, and a lot of people think that you have to go to Rochester to um, receive school supplies in a backpack, and that's not true. That's a good point. As long as you live in Fulton County, we don't care if you go to Valley, Caston, Culver, we Argus, because now you know you can go to those schools. Um, as long as you reside in Fulton County, you are eligible to receive that. 
we find that we don't have to do an income or a background check. Most of our residents are pretty honest when they need help. It's a humble experience in itself. So when they need help, we we know that they're in need in need of assistance. So, Ages? Um, we um, preschool. Okay. So if you got a child that's in preschool okay. that needs help, all the way to seniors. Okay. Excellent. And you know what? Um, we've even helped freshmen in college that they needed some school supplies and they were leaving the area. We've even given them school supplies. Yeah, so. Wow. Um, with no age discrimination, yeah. actually. Um, and we gave out over 600 backpacks last year. It was oh. full of school supplies. So when do you start the process of giving out the, the backpacks? One week before Rochester school starts. Okay. And All then right. Valley starts later, and of right. course Argus and um, Caston. So we don't have a set time for those, but we just leave it open. You can walk into the building and get school supplies okay. at any time. So normally the distribution starts the first week in August and it's over by the second week. Okay. So if somebody's listening or watching and they, they need help with some school supplies, how would they go about getting those supplies? Well, we have a Facebook page, Fulton County Pack a Backpack, so you can always like that and um, send us private messages. Or you can call Tidewater Executive Tax Service at 574-367-7366, and anybody there will be able to answer any of your questions. Monetary donations and school supplies are um, both accepted at 806 Main Street. Okay. And I know you have a couple of events coming up. Tell us a little bit about those. Okay. Well, our first, this really is an event, but we are raffling off a 32-inch smart TV. And that's just a dollar a ticket. So everybody loves smart TV <laughs> <Yeah>. technology. <laughs> so for a dollar. Um, is there kind of a play on words there with the smart TV <laughs> and school supplies? <laughs> it's your smart TV and school supplies. There but And say you don't want to drive downtown to make um, to purchase the dollar, you can give us a call. Okay. And for a $5 ticket, five tickets, we will allow you to put it on a debit or credit card. So you can just give us a call okay. and purchase those raffle tickets. And then our big event, this is our first annual um, Fulton County Packet Back pack um, bingo and Delilah Hackworth has um, in charge of this committee and she's doing a really good job um, it's going to be um, on July 11th at 6 p.m. and you know the building there on the corner of 5th and Main yeah uh, we're gonna have it there at that building right okay. by Beacon we're trying to come up with a name for that building we haven't got one yet <laughs> um, but it's going to be held held there July 11th at 6 p.m. and we already have such great donations the Lula Rowe has donated Mike Anderson 31 bags Mary Kay uh, some individuals pampered chef um, you name it we've probably already got about 20 prizes to give away Excellent. So mm -hmm. those are $20 per ticket get you in the door okay well give us a reminder again of if somebody wants to donate or if they need school supplies how do we go about getting a hold of you okay you can come to tidewater at 806 main street and um anytime monday through friday from 9 a.m to 4 p.m or um you can like our page at fulton county pack a backpack on facebook or give us a call at 574-367-7366 jackie this is something you obviously work on year round we do. Like if you I mean, want sure to, yeah, you know, we take a break um, right. probably from December through April. Okay. Kind of, uh, we take a break, but all year round we talk about it. It's in our hearts. We dream about it, and um, we are very strong into it all year. You are Excellent. correct. Excellent. It's a tremendous service. Thank you. Absolutely tremendous. Thank you. Well, thank you to you and all the folks that have participated in this, supported it, and reminder no glues or pencils but <laughs> yeah, other types of donations that's right. um, but thank you because I know for a lot of families that is a hardship and it's wonderful to have a resource like your organization in the community to um, be able to help support students who may just not be able to afford those things maybe it's not a fair question but you have repeat customers you probably mm -hmm. do don't you yes yeah, uh, yeah. yes exactly they, yeah. you know um our our um, community they really there are a lot of families who count on us so so if, I, if we ever feel the need that we want to give up, which we won't, because right. we love it, I couldn't because there's so many people who count on us. Right. Exactly. Well done. Well, thank well you. again, thank you for um, all the work that you guys do to support students in Fulton County, making sure they're ready to go to school and learn. And um, 
provide a positive environment. Thank you. Thanks for so, having me. All right. Well, if you have questions about what we've talked about today, um, scholarships, again, um, back home again in Indiana, Fulton County Youth, Eric E. Smoker Memorial Scholarship, the Graduate Scholarships, Ginger Miller Higher Education, um, Frederick Rakestraw Law Scholarship. Um, again, those deadlines are July 7th. So check those out, um, get those applications into us. Um, information about what we've talked about today will be on our website, nicf.org. Of course, you can always like us on Facebook under Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Give us a call, 224-3223, or stop by our office at 715 Main Street here in Rochester. We'd love to talk to you about any ideas you may have for making Fulton County better. Brian Johnson, thank you so much. Thanks for the visit today. Jackie Johnson, nice to have you in here as well. Thanks.